morning, church. <laughs> Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome right here on Zoom and Wednesday on, uh, when we're on TV. You belong, you are loved, and you matter. Who knew the Westbrook Spring Arts and Crafts Fair was today? Sorry for the parking. We welcome the Reverend Kathy Peters. How about giving a wave? Who's with us here today? Kathy last served as senior minister at United Church of Chester before she and Stanley retired to the villages in Florida. We get to enjoy Elena these last two Sundays before we have to say goodbye to her next Sunday. And I'm sure you now know that Diane Wolf is retiring as our senior choir director, effective June 27th. We're sad for us, but so happy for her. We thank the choir for their recorded anthem today, and we look forward to hearing from them again in the fall. If anyone would like to offer special music this summer, please just give a shout out to me. Love to hear anybody. Do a tap dance. I know Beth Frisbee taps. Well, I guess it would be, we'd have to do something about that up here, right? Our beautiful flowers are offered by Rosemary Gulliford in loving memory of Harold Gulliford. Thank you, Rosemary. Our flower sign up board is at the back of the sanctuary. If you'd like to sign up, be sure to include what the flowers are for. We'll commission our pastoral search committee next Sunday. On June 20th, we'll give our senior award to a high school graduate. We thank Norman Nielsen, where is she? There she is, uh, for reading our scripture passage today. And we thank Bob Hansen and Bill Fredrickson for being our tech gurus. And we thank our deacons on duty, Sandy Clark and Jan Mazzo. Now about those communion cups, hope you got one. Um, they're a little easier than the ones we passed along for Easter. Uh, so you might want to, at some point in the service, get them ready so that you're ready for communion. What you'll do is you'll just pull back that first plastic to get the wafer and then the other uh, little tab for your juice. And now, how about we breathe lots of peace in and breathe, exhale, lots of peace out. I invite you to turn to one another to give and receive the peace. The peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> Very nice, everybody. Please join me now in our gathering prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we come this day, having seen the miracles of everyday creation in our world. We have enjoyed both the bright sunshine and the gentle rains. We have marveled over the beauty of flowers and the complexity of your creation. Make our hearts ready to receive your word for us that we may go forth from this place ready to joyfully serve you all of our days. Amen.
In this time of prayer, I'm so happy to share that Shelly and Craig Wilson are grandparents again. Oh. Lindsay and Lewis had a baby boy this past Monday. His name is Levi. Lord, oh. hear our praise. As we pray for our United Church of Christ Middlesex Association churches, the Congregational Church of Killingworth requests prayers for the unvaccinated children of the church as they help with next Sunday's service and recognitions given. Lord, hear oh, our God. prayer. <laughs> On a horrible note, I saw yesterday that nearly 600,000 in the United States have been lost to COVID, now a leading cause of death. Researchers estimate that more than 5 million Americans are in mourning, including more than 43,000 children who have lost a parent. Lord, hear our prayer. Would you like to share anything else? A joy, a concern. I would just like to share that um, Frank's mother's son, Jeff, had his surgery. And even though he's got a ways to go, they did have to do a vasectomy. And um, she had a couple of little pieces of radiation involved, but they thought that it was going to be the main part of the night. Exactly. For Jeffrey Slowick, um, no lymph nodes were involved. So we're grateful for that. And uh, he'll have a bit of healing to go, but uh, he is doing well. And Frank feels very encouraged by it. So Lord, hear our prayer for Jeff. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. You know, after we've thought about others... I invite you to take a moment to place your hand on your heart for some self-care. Remember yourself and your need this hour and let Jesus be with you. Just let's first just take a moment. I know some of you like it when we breathe. I had a thought last week. In the beginning was the word, but before that, the breath. In our scripture that we'll hear in a little bit, 
Adam and Eve hear the sound of God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, the Hebrew word for breeze is the same word for breath. God is breath. God is the breeze. God is the wind. God is spirit. God is the breath. It's the breath that's always going to bring you back to God. In the time of COVID, when so many had a hard time taking a breath and even lost their breath, may we cherish our breath and take the time to be intentional with breathing, which we invite now. I invite a short time of just breathing in and out the breath of life, the breath of your life that connects you with God. You might wish to breathe in for four, pause, then breathe out for four. and so on like that in the silence, in the breath, in God. God of the breath, God who is breath, thank you for breath, for life. Our Adam and Eve text reminds us there is no hiding from you, O Lord. You hear our breath and you see us and know us completely. While you might hope that we would clean up parts of our lives because we're trying to hide, we thank you that you also love us just as we are. In this moment, we are going to be still and know your love. No punishment, love. And help us, God, to love not just the person we hope to grow into, but to love the person we are. Help us to love not just the person we hope others will grow into, but to love them as they are not as we wish them to be.
hear our prayer for whatever is going on outside. We ask your healing love for Frank and Jeffrey, Catherine and Patty, Bob and Susan, Nancy, Jaron, Jill, Grace and Edwin, Janet, Lucille, Brian, Lynn, Jean, Rose, Dottie, Patty and Phil, John and Diane, Beth's sister, Nan. And now in our many voices, we pray, O God, as Jesus taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. standing in God's presence on holy ground. So thank you for the gifts placed in our offering baskets before or after worship, as well as those that were mailed in or electronically deposited. May our generosity be such that God's goodness may be known in this place, in Westbrook and in the wider world. Let us sing to God in gratitude and praise.
Please join me in our prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Generous God, take our gifts this day and use them so that we may be part of your great work in this world. Through our giving, bring justice and love closer to all, not just in our community, but in the world beyond these walls. Strengthen our church so that we grow together each day into a powerful voice for healing and peace. Amen. Good morning. From the book of Genesis, chapter three, verses eight through 15. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and the woman hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? 
He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commended you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed you are among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. The word of the God of God for the people of God. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Norma. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The Garden of Paradise is often interpreted as an allegory about growing up. The Garden of Eden, like childhood, is a time of innocence. Humans like to hold on to this idea that there was a time before our innocence was taken away when all was well, and we long to get back there. The story highlights the serpent who comes along and forces us to open our eyes and grow up. Do you know the moment when Eden was over for you? Maybe it was Santa. Maybe someone's death. A sexual encounter. An addiction. Time in jail. Infertility. A health issue. Divorce a church going through a lot of changes? When did you know that life would not just be paradise? We see God punishing the serpent. But the truth is, the serpent is the symbol for the healer for medicine, the thing that hurts you is more than likely going to be the path to your healing, to your growing up. The poison is the medicine. <laughs> it hurts to say it. Funny thing, it's been said that if God had wanted us to stay innocent, he wouldn't have created a garden with such mysterious trees for the serpent to point out. God always wanted to give us freedom a world where we can make our own choices, then learn from them and grow. Rock star Alanis Morissette 
sang a song in the 90s called, You Learn. You learn, you grow. You learn, you grow. You live, you learn. You love, you learn. You cry, you learn. You lose, you learn. You bleed, you learn. You scream, you learn. You grieve, you learn. That seems to have been God's intent for us to grow. Here in Earth School, I've wondered though, sure, if at first God wanted to keep us all to himself and keep us in a protected environment. Don't parents feel that way with their children? Until they've been so awful, we wanna kick them out. But remember, Remember when it was hard to let them go out to play alone or to a friend's home or to go off to school that first day? We said, don't do this, don't do that, be good. Remember the first time you had to watch them get on a school bus? Not knowing if they were going to get there? not knowing if someone was going to hurt their feelings. Oh, not knowing if they were going to cheat on their math test, not knowing if they'd fall and scrape their knee. It hurts something awful to let our children go. which we do even more so after high school graduation. We have to give them the freedom to walk away from us, to make their own choices. But they learn, they grow. God had to let Adam and Eve break his God heart so they could grow. If God didn't give the tree of knowledge, we would have been little more than God's pets. Our children would be little more than our pets if we never let them go. No, he had to let us grow and let go. And for those who don't want to get on that school bus, a good parent has to nudge them out into the world because we all have to leave Eden. There is a defining moment in everyone's life. We have to leave Eden. Our son, Abe, is 20, in college, and in need of work over the summer. He had gotten a job as a counselor at Bushy Hill but when he found out he'd only receive a stipend that would amount to $3 an hour, he declined it. But it would have given him so many other learning opportunities. He decided to work for Instacart and DoorDash again, which hadn't gone that well last summer. He doesn't want to work that hard. So he quit doing it, and he put in applications elsewhere, all while getting to stay in Eden, 
with another entitled friend who doesn't work. While his dad and I keep talking about work and financial responsibility, have you ever thought about this, how it is a waste of breath for a parent to even talk with a 20-year-old? It's my last summer to be a kid. It's so frustrating because parents are like, <laughs> if you just listen to me, if you do this and don't do that, your life is going to go more smoothly. I guess the thing is, they have to learn for themselves. We did. Meantime, Abe and a friend had gone to the Madison Beach Club where he'd heard he could make a lot of money serving. They've never served before. The manager said to give her a week. Abe called back. The most she could offer was being a sub. Well, that would never do. So Abe accepted a job elsewhere that he didn't really want. Friday night, the Madison manager called and said she had spots for two dishwashers and that she felt they could quickly be moved from that position to serving. Turns out there's a lot of turnaround in the restaurant industry. Maybe because they use college kids without experience who don't want to work that hard. Well, Abe was thrilled. $15 an hour. I'm sure he'll complain about how hard it is. Oy. But God sent his children to work, to get their fingers dirty, to grow up, where they had to learn there's no free lunch, and they won't always get what they want. In doing so, they will learn and grow, learn and grow. It's this growing that God likes. I know we hate it sometimes, don't we? It's the learning that God relishes in us. He wants us to be fruitful, to not just take his fruit, but to become fruit, which we can only do by learning and growing. Maybe instead of wasting our breath with do this, don't do that, maybe what's most helpful to teach our children and to teach one another is that the air we breathe, the food we eat, the friends we treasure, the job that brings us joy and money to live, a sunset, the music of the night, a child laughing, are all gifts from God. That God is there and creates all these rich moments for us. Maybe that's what we tell one another. The author of Genesis wants us most to know that a good life depends upon remembering the creator. Another author 
came along and said, remember his son who knows just how hard this human experience is of ours. It's hard to be a kid. It's hard to be an adult. It's hard to be a parent. This one, this Jesus, he says, I can lighten the load if you let me walk with you in earth school. And one day, I will take you to Eden forever. Amen. Jesus loves us in these mortal bodies, in this communion meal. Come, you who've waited, waited for a graduation like it used to be, a memorial service to get to say goodbye, to meet friends for a night out, a church service to return to the church and sing the hymns and get to have communion. For those on Zoom, if your elements of communion are with you, I invite you to rest your hands lightly upon them. I invite those present to place your cup in your hands. God, in whose open hand we place our own, whether we first met you long ago or in this very moment, we pray that you send your spirit of life and blessing upon all of us gathered anywhere so that this bread may be broken and received in love and this cup poured out to give hope. Risen Christ, as you have faith in us, may we have faith in you. Breathe in us that we may breathe in you. Amen. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he thanked God for the bread and he broke it and he broke it and he broke it. And he gave it to his friends saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this and remember me. I will be in all the brokenness. Take and eat and remember. After supper, after they'd had a time of sharing their meal and memories of all of their time together, the laughter, the tears, the healing, the learning, the growing, Jesus rose and he took a cup and pouring it, he said, this is my blood, which is poured out for you and for many in forgiveness and in blessing. When you drink of this cup, remember me. Remember my love for you. Love yourself, love others, forgive yourself, 
forgive others. Take and drink and remember his love for you. We are forgiven, blessed, loved, and set free for another week of learning, right? <laughs> We're set free for another week of learning and growing. I invite us now to pray our prayer of thanksgiving. Sorry, it's a long one. Let us pray. Thank you, O Lord, for pouring out your spirit upon the gifts of bread and cup, fed by the bread of hope and patience. We will wait for the opportunities to feed those who are hungry, to welcome all who are excluded, to share all that we have, and run to give of ourselves to others. Nourished by the cup of grace and joy, we will not give up in the face of injustice, anger, and fear, but continue to walk with those who are weary, to carry those who have no strength, to skip with little kids filled with delight. Thank you for the table of healing and grace, God in community, holy in one. Amen. Here's my last thing to say to you. So, you should feel for minister's kids who with or without their permission are used as an illustration in sermons. And I wanted to say second. God bless you parents who already made it through your kids' young adulthood. You are my heroes and sheroes. And now, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with great kindness and give you peace and give you breath. Amen. Amen.